Hi, I'm Conan with Arson, and we're going to talk about bundle branch block morphology. I have nothing to disclose. So first we're going to talk about normal electrocardiogram morphology, then look at right bundle branch block, and then left bundle branch block. So we're going to lay out a little schema here, that way we can compare everything all together. So normal morphology, first we're going to consider the normal heart. We're going to look at it from two angles, from V1, which is a right-sided electrocardiogram lead, and V6, which is a left-sided electrocardiogram lead. I'm going to lay out here what it looks like in V1 and V6 in a normal EKG, an EKG with right bundle branch block, an EKG with left bundle branch block. Then what we're going to do is sort of exaggerate the different components of the electrocardiogram. That way we can see in detail how the EKG develops in these three different scenarios. So the first part we're going to look at is septal activation. Then a window of time during which it would be relatively normal for the ventricle, both the right and left ventricles, to activate. And then a window of time where it would be abnormal for the ventricles to activate. In other words, in the setting of either a right or left bundle branch block, there's a delay in activation of the relevant ventricle. And that's why there's a red line here, because anything after this red line would be considered an abnormal length for the QRS complex, which is up to 0.12 seconds or 120 milliseconds. And again, this is going to be exaggerated, but at the end we're going to tie it back together and show relatively normal looking EKG tracings. That way you can visually recognize these when you're looking at electrocardiograms. Okay, so first let's go through the normal activation. And the first thing that happens in the ventricle is septal activation. And septal activation proceeds from the left side to the right side. So I'm going to draw a little electrical axis. In other words, when this little patch of myocardium is activated, there is an electrical current that points away from that depolarized myocardium and is pointing in this direction, from the left side of the heart to the right side of the heart. Therefore, in V1, we're going to inscribe a positive deflection. But in V6, which is looking away from this vector, we're going to inscribe a negative deflection. And that's what's shown here. Next, there's activation of the right and left ventricles relatively simultaneously. However, since the left ventricle is a much thicker ventricle, the mean electrical axis will point towards the left ventricle and away from the right ventricle. And that's depicted here in this big red arrow that's pointing more to the left side than the right side. So if you have that and you consider what V1 is seeing, V1 is seeing a negative net vector. And so you get an S wave in the normal EKG in V1. But V6 sees a positive net vector, and you get an R wave. Excuse me, Q, an R wave. Now when the entire ventricle is depolarized, there's electrical silence because there's no electrical gradient, and the EKG returns the baseline. And this is a relatively normal-looking EKG. In other words, in V1, in the normal EKG, you get a small R wave, a deep S wave, and in V6, you get a small Q wave, which we call a septal Q wave, and a relatively tall R wave. Now in right bundle branch block, you still have that normal septal activation. So the beginning part of the EKG is relatively unchanged. But then, because the right bundle branch is blocked, it takes time for the right ventricle to depolarize. The wave front right here where this cursor is, it's proceeding very slowly because it has to go through gap junction cell to cell conduction rather than through the fast bundle branch block specialized conduction tissue. So what that means is the left ventricle is ahead of the right, right ventricle and the left ventricle is depolarized but the right ventricle is yet to depolarize. So again, more or less, you still get a net electrical axis that's pointing towards the left ventricle as the left ventricle is depolarizing, inscribing a negative deflection from the standpoint of V1 and a positive deflection from the standpoint of V6. So now the left ventricle is fully depolarized, the right ventricle is still catching up, the right bundle branch is now proceeding slowly, cell to cell conduction, <laughs> through the right ventricle, and you get a net electrical current towards V1 and away from V6, shown here. Now you have a positive deflection, which is delayed 
because it's slower conduction, leading to the widening of the QRS complex. You get a positive deflection in V1, and now a negative deflection in V6. And now when the ventricle is fully depolarized, again, you return to baseline. And note the morphology here. You have an R wave here, an S wave here, and a second R wave here, which we term R prime. And in V6, we would call this a Q wave, an R wave, and an S wave. So the, the eye is sort of visually drawn to this R, S, R prime pattern, and the mnemonic that people often use is this concept of rabbit ears in V1. So that's the morphology that's described by right bundle branch block. So last, we're going to consider left bundle branch block. Now the thing about left bundle branch block is the septal depolarization is deranged. In other words, and what I've done here is squish up normal and right bundle branch block to leave room for left bundle branch block. In other words, the septal depolarization, rather than proceeding from left to right, tends to proceed from right to left. So you don't really have that septal deflection that's positive in V1 or negative in V6. Rather, there tends to be a deep Q wave, although truth be told, on most normal most examples of left bundle branch block, you'll see a teeny tiny little R wave in V1. But let's not concern ourselves with that detail now. So you have a Q wave in, in V1 and an R wave in V6 because the septal depolarization is deranged. And now because the left bundle is blocked, the left ventricle takes time to depolarize, but the right ventricle is now ahead. The right ventricle is ahead and there is a net depolarization towards V1 and away from V6. In typical left bundles, it tends not to cross baseline. In other words, by the end of this depolarization, you're still less than uh, the baseline, EKG. Then now the right ventricle is fully depolarized and the left bundle, or rather the left ventricle is now depolarizing, but it's depolarizing slowly as this wavefront has to proceed through gap junctions. And what that means is, excuse me, I'm going to go back here. You have a net electrical axis that is now towards V6, and it takes a real long time, and it's away from V1. So what you get here in V1, since that axis is away from V1, is a negative deflection. And in V6, you get a positive deflection. And then lastly, when the entire ventricle is depolarized, you have a return to baseline. So this is a normal EKG, right bundle branch block, and left bundle branch block. These are exaggerated. The x-axis or time is not depicted realistically. So what I'm going to do now on the next slide is give you some examples of cartoons that you could sort of file away to, to have some more realistic examples of what these look like in actual practice. So these are some examples of a normal EKG, right bundle branch block, left bundle branch block. Note, right bundle branch block, you have the R, S, R prime, or the rabbit ears in V1. Note that in normal EKG, it's very normal to have a small Q wave in V6. That's the septal depolarization. Left bundle branch block, you have a deep and slurred S and S prime, typically. And in that's in V1. In V6, you have an R and an R prime. Now, to me, this pattern is often sort of very trapezoidal. To me, it's very reminiscent of the John Hancock building here in Chicago. So I always like to say uh, Hancock building in V6, but that doesn't always bear out. So that's how normal EKGs, right bundle branch block and left bundle branch block are developed. Thank you.